Hey guys, <clears throat> I've been eating ice cream. <laughs> I thought I would come on in here and chit chat with you guys. We're going to let some people join because this is a surprise live and no one knows, knows I was going live. So, um, let's let some people join. <clears throat> Oh, I just bit my cheek. Judith, you're from Coleman? Oh, yeah. You, you came from Lester's page and told me you were from Coleman, right? Isn't that crazy? We both live in Coleman. Did you not hear of me before Lester? Because I've kind of been... Well, I've been... Coleman... Um, I was in the Coleman Daily Magazine... Um, I was on the front cover of, what's it called? The, um, Coleman EMC magazine. I was on the cover of it. Have you not heard for, about me before Lester? That's so crazy, Judith. I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah, um, Coleman Tribune. If you, um, Google Sneed's Farmhouse. Um, you can read all the articles that have been written about me, um, Judith, but I can't, that's so funny that you haven't heard of me until Lester. You know, it's funny how the world is, right? I live in your hometown and you've never heard of me. Um, <clears throat> I'm really, really tired today. Very tired. Yes, um, we have a lot of new subscribers, and I can't thank you enough. Um, oh, you did Google me, so you saw all the stuff that I've done. I was at the um, I'm at the Coleman County Fair the past two years. I'm at that too. But anyway, um, I have a lot of new subscribers, <clears throat> and thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope that. Uh, you enjoy my page. I don't know. Some of you have been watching my videos because it shows me that when I go to look, well, I only see if you comment. So, like, I don't know that you're watching my videos unless you comment. But when you comment, it shows me the video that you're watching. And so, a lot of you are watching my old videos, I guess, kind of trying to get to know my animals and getting to know me. And I see you guys commenting, and it's been really sweet to see y'all watch. Um, thank you, Denise. So today was a very special day. I've had this lady that um, has been following me, I don't know, several years on Facebook. And she asked for her 72nd birthday to come meet me. And so her family brought her to meet me today. And it was, oh my goodness. It was, my husband's coming in. It was, uh, it was wonderful. Come here, cutie. What? Come say hey to everybody. Hey. So we have a lot of new, see, he hasn't been in the loop. He's been, he's been, well, I thought he was going turkey hunting, but he just came home with a gun. I don't think he... Did you go turkey hunting? No, he used to weekend. Well, then why'd you carry your gun? Just in case I found a youth. What, you just going to sucker a kid no, to go hunting with you? so. He probably would do that. Hey, kid, come over here. You want to go hunting? <laughs> You're so funny. He's been gone all weekend. He ain't been gone all weekend. I've gone half a day Friday and, and all day Saturday, and I've been home all day today. Get your story straight. I, I, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he hasn't been here all weekend. Anyway, um, so I went live with Lester, and I have a lot of new subscribers. Hey. So um, this is my other half. The Shane. better half. Shane. Some, we used to call him Garth, but I started confusing people, so I quit calling him Garth. But everyone says he looks like Garth Brooks, and I look like, what's her name? Oh, Reed Drummond. Hi. Reed Drummond. I look like Reed Drummond and he looks like Garth Brooks. And we're like, dude, if we only had their money, we could have 50 acres right now. 
We could have more than 50 acres. Dexter could have all kinds of girlfriends. But um, um, I said thanks for sharing your wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. You're not supposed to say that. You just share me with anybody? Sometimes I wonder if we married. I've been looking for expiration date on the tag of, on a marriage certificate. I ain't found one. He says that all the time. He always says. So good, it expired nine years ago. He's so crazy. Shane, you don't see Shane a lot. Shane, how do I put you? Shane has to work every day for a living, seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day to fill in these projects around here. <laughs> oh, he ain't lying. He's <laughs> spent cutting grass, building buildings, putting hay barns up, cutting wood, repairing everything she tore up through the week. That's my daily job. What do I tear up? Her and Car uh, her and uh, uh, Kayla, Kayla and uh, Jessica, and and I still ain't caught up from Jessica's mess up. Jessica was a girl that worked for us this past summer. She was, well, she was not sixteen. I guess she was 15. Fi fifteen years old. And I put her on the tractor for the first time, and Thinking, I <laughs> without giving her prior instructions. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I put her on the tractor because I was, she wanted to learn how to drive the tractor. So I was taking this 15 year old by the hand, she, trying to teach her how to ride the tractor, my tractor. Okay. She ran straight for the fence of my yeah, neighbors. She, she ran down the fence with a bucket. And oh, she, she ripped that, the that fence. fence she, ran, <laughs> she ripped the fence. Shane was like, nobody is to get on this tractor. Um, I still ain't got that job fixed yet. Is it not? No, Judy, it's not. There's too many other things going on around here that take priority versus fixing a hole in the fence for a German Shepherd to jump through. Timothy, you remember the, the, yeah. guy, the guy that gave me all the um, yeah, Tim. Polish? He's trying to take up for you, but I'm take not, for me, I am not letting Tim take, take up for you. Somebody, I am Tim not. Tim's been to the house. He knows what it's like. <laughs> He's been following me long enough. He knows me. Yeah, Shane. Um, let me. Why do you? Why did you want me to stay home? Like you said, you'd never want me to go back to work. Because I'm your honeydew person. Yeah, pretty much. He has me a honeydew list every week. Hey, go to the bank for me. Hey, I need my Hang medicine. On. I work six, seven days a week. I can't go. But being putting all things aside. If I said, Shane, I'm going to go get a full-time job right now. Better find you another house go stay in somewhere. Why, why don't you want me to work? Because yeah. I'm so cute, you don't want yeah. me out in the public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Why, don't, why don't you want me to work? I've never asked you that. we got too much going on with two people to work. You wouldn't be able to do and have what you're doing. I mean, like if I said... I'm going to give up Sneeze Farmhouse and I'm going to go back and work in the wireless industry. <laughs> Take off. Hurry up. I, I can push my retirement date a little, little faster. I can, I can stay at home. How many acres do you dream of having? 17 is what we have. <laughs> no. If I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming big. Like how big? How big do you think? I need about three thousand acres. No, I need to be right in the middle of it. Shane, I here Shane, I have to tell you something. You know how God blesses some people to be rich. Yeah. it ain't us, honey. I know. That's we ain't. We will never. Dream, if you go dream. You dream big. Be realistic. That is realistic. A three thousand acre, Shane. I I could be just fine right in the middle of it. But we have to be able to talk about something that we both can afford. There's no way that we could ever. Well, we can't afford that, but you said dream. I'm dreaming. No, I mean, dream of what you can afford. Hell, I can't afford this. Shane, stop I it. I pretty time working six, seven days a week, two or three jobs. He is. Hey, if y'all didn't know, I do have two jobs, and they're almost two full-time jobs, plus this right here. So, uh yeah, I'm busy. Okay, but I just look. 
I just walk in the door from cutting her grass that she's supposed to be cutting because the lawnmower that she wanted, I bought, we bought, and she was going to cut grass. Call to the hand. Going, we working, and I still get stuck doing all that. And you want to know why you can't see me? People love when anytime I do a video with Shane, they love Shane because Shane and I cut up. 95% of the time we kind of go at each other, but it's our way of flirting. I guess you can say, uh, you don't it, give me no it might like it might. <laughs> Are you serious? It might like come across as we're attacking each other, but it's like, it's kind of like just what we do. But, um, yeah, Shane's not lying. He really does have two full-time jobs. And um, he is our provider. And um, majority of what we have is because he works two jobs. So he, when he gets home, the last thing that he wants to do is get on a live video. And people are like, please bring Shane on, please. I'm like, dude, I can't get him to stop. Like, I need him to get him to stop. I'm like, will you go live with me just one day a week? Judy. This is your day a week, right? Here. This is what he said. Judy. We have got things to do. You can sleep when you're dead and gone, but we have got things to do. I do not have time to sit down and go live. And I'm like, Shane, people love you. And um, uh, people love you. They want you to, they like you more than me. I feel like if Shane had a YouTube channel, Y'all would watch him more than y'all'd watch me. But but what what would you what would you do? You're welding. I ain't got time to do that, Jim. Oh, what would you do? A hunting channel? I don't know. Oh, Shane, listen. If you start a hunting channel, maybe we'll go. It'll go viral and we'll get rich, and then you can do your three thousand acres. Probably gonna I'll edit your videos. Yeah, probably <laughs> I ain't got time to sit there and hold a camcorder and, and try to video. Camcorder? What? Camcorder? Yeah. Shane, there, camcorders have been out centuries ago, Shane. I got, I, I ain't camcorders got, when you used to put... They still got... They still you got used to pee on your right. shoulder and go film. I'm not filming with a camcorder, Shane. They got handheld. <laughs> He's so funny. No, he, he gets mad at me. Um, for being on my phone, he's like, "Put that phone down. We got things to do." And I'm like, "Dude, this is a good recording right here. Say it again. Say it again." Oh no! I always do that. He says something funny, and I'm like, "Wait a minute. Let me get my phone." <laughs> it is. I will say, having a creator as a wife or a husband. I'm sure it's stressful. Is it? Dude, you stress you stress me out every day. Don't it lie. Is, it's just stressful every day. If y'all only knew how much stress I was under just putting up with. Shane, I do not stress you out. Dang, I take three blood pressure pills a day. What That's because you, you eat because you eat a cupcake and an ice cream and a candy bar. It has nothing to do I with me. I had no candy bar. You had it. I didn't even eat a cupcake, uh, there, Chunky Monkey. You're the one that ate the cupcake. Okay, what did you eat? Oh, you ate a piece of cake. I ate a, I ate a piece of cake that you baked. So I did not make that. Oh, I don't know. I thought you did for some reason. And then... Uh, an ice cream cone. And an ice cream and cone. And then a chocolate. I saw you open that little chocolate thing. Yeah. Those, those That's why he has yeah. blood high blood pressure. It ain't because of me. I promise you it's because of her. You just knew what I had to do every day just to keep her going every day. <clears throat> That's enough to kill anybody. I feel so sorry for you. Yeah, I know you do. I know You've you got do. such a hard life there, buddy. I do. I do. Such a hard life there, buddy. You don't understand. I got 15 more years of work, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. Hey, what do you think about our purple walls? People have been asking. Oh. They're pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. I mean, I, I mean. He said he would. When I told him that we were painting our bedroom purple, he was like, I am not. 
having a purple bedroom. I'm like, oh, but yes, you are. It's deep and dark enough that it's, I mean, the lights off, it doesn't look purple. What color do you think eggplant was? Green? Yeah, I thought it was a green color. I said it's eggplant color. He goes, eggplant is a green. I said, an eggplant is not green. An eggplant is purple. He was like, no, it's not. It's green. Oh, Kayla's back on. Kayla. Um, yeah, so tomorrow, um, the painter's coming back and going to paint my bathroom. And my bathroom is a lighter version of this purple. So I'm excited. Timothy, the only thing I want you to bring me is some more uh, chickens. No, I am not. Because you have kids. pretty chickens, Timothy. Don't be bringing any more chickens. We need some chickens. We got 60 on the incubator. Uh, we got about 20 in the brooder. And we got 150 on the yard. I don't think we need any more chickens. You worry about just... Shane, you need to love me for who I am. I'm the crazy chicken lady. Yeah, this crazy. is who That's you. Crazy part, you right? This is the wife you have chose. Mm -hmm. Out of all the women in the world, you chose me. No, you suckered me like you do. And I, I am the crazy you. chicken lady, Shane. Yeah, you, you got the crazy part. Right? Don't forget who started this. Who started these chicken face? He's the one that said, "Let's get chickens." Not me. It was just it was just to kind of give y'all something to do through the day. I didn't mean I didn't mean for you to buy every chicken on the continent. <laughs> so, Shane, yeah. I, there's still there's still one thing that I color egg that I do not have. That's good. Well, there's a lot of things in life that I don't have, and it's okay. Quit spitting the floor. I got a hair or something. Well, don't spit in my floor. <laughs> Like we're on live and you're spitting in the floor. I'm blowing across my lips because I feel a hair. You're going. <laughs> I'll spit in a minute. You won't like it. He's spitting in my daggum floor. <laughs> um. No, there's one animal <laughs> that that lays eggs that I don't have. Well, there's two. I do not have. I think it's called a Caillou duck that lays a black egg. Shane. You know, I ain't no Shane. And then an emu, an emu no lays turquoise eggs. We ain't getting no emu. I don't want an emu. I just want to raise an emu and give it to no Zoe emu. and Nick. We ain't raising no more ducks. He's out of here now. Done. He's done. <laughs> See, he can only handle short segments. Did he say camcorder? I record with a camcorder. He's so funny. Okay, so I'll just tell you a couple of things about me because a lot of you are new, new um, <clears throat> subscribers to me and new followers. We have vocabulary words here at Sneeds Farmhouse. Okay, so this right here, do you know what this is? Has a cord. Some people call this a curling iron. Okay. Well, here at Sneeds Farmhouse, this is our preaching stick. Okay. <laughs> this is a preaching stick because what happens is in the mornings when I go live, it is like we go to church. I start preaching. I start telling you how to change your life. <laughs> and I get to talking. And I I don't know, like one time I was going live. And I was trying to get my point across, and I was going, I'm like, you need to listen to me. You need to listen to me right now. And I was like, what am I doing? And so we just call this a preaching stick. And so I try to get a new preaching stick from time to time. I have a pink one. I have a red one. And I have this one. Um, these are called beach wavers. They're my favorite preaching stick. But um, this is my summer preaching stick. So um, if you join me live uh, in the mornings on Mondays and Wednesdays, I talk about real life situations that I go through and how I got to where I am today. Because there was a day when I literally 
sat in a red chair and cried all day long for years and never got out of the chair. I was in a deep, dark depression for a long time. And so I tell people the tools that I have in my pocket that I have to pull out to deal with everyday life. And I try to teach people how to put tools in their pocket to learn how to dance. When I say dance, I don't mean physically dance. I mean, so many times there's things in our life that keep us from dancing, from from smiling, from, you know, moving forward with life. We get stuck in a rut. And so I talk about those things and I get the daggum preaching stick out. And then I'm like, okay, let me just tell y'all, y'all better listen to your Aunt Judy because I'm telling you right now. So I just start preaching with it. So this is a preaching stick. Often I tell people in the beginning of my lives, I tell you to go get your protein shake because I was aerobic instructor my entire life. And I was also a fitness trainer and a personal trainer and so forth. And I know that protein is very important in order for you to be strong and healthy. So I tell you to go get your protein drink, but I drink Coke Zero, and that is my protein drink. So when I tell you I've got to drink my protein, I'm drink. I'm a train wreck, okay? I am a train wreck. I do not drink protein. I drink Coke Zeros, and I call them my protein shakes because as I've gotten older, I have become a train wreck, and I drink Coke Zero. So I'm joking when I say go grab your protein drink because we're going to need it this conversation. So... That's another thing. What else am I leaving out? Um, oh, so I don't know. Probably, I would say probably two years ago, this lady ripped me a new one about, she said that I had greasy hair, okay? <laughs> and she was making these comments that I had no business filming with greasy hair, well, this was in the middle of the summer, y'all, and I am pouring, I have long hair, I am pouring sweat in the summer, so my hair may be a little wet from sweat, so when people start being really ugly and, you know, not making you feel your best, I just name things after them, so I sometimes go, y'all, I'm having a Cynthia hair day, and I just named my hair Cynthia, because of this lady saying that I'm a straight up cheese ball and have greasy hair. So there are days that I'm a cheese ball. And so on those days, I'm like, y'all, I'm having a Cynthia hair day. So that is another vocabulary word is Cynthia hair because she straight up told me I was a cheese ball. And let's see what other, come on people, what other vocabulary words? Let me think. Preach and stick, protein, Cynthia hair. Um, okay, another thing that is big on my channel is I do not allow arguments. And we don't have arguments on my page, to be honest with you. There's not, no one is ugly. Um, I just, I think I'm very lucky to have followers that, um, Oh, God, Cynthia, I thought it was you and I just said, <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't you, Cynthia. Um, I um, have a lot of followers that have learned how to dance. Um, they listen to me in the mornings and they learn how to pause because I teach people before you react, you need to pause. Like take a breath and pause, you know, set a timer for 10 minutes if you need to take a 10 minute break. Out there with a the blower. Um, so I teach people to um, pause. And he's out here with the blower while I'm live and the dogs are going to go crazy. So um, basically, um, I have taught my followers not to react with being ugly to people, but actually to get people to talk. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Y'all are going to find this funny. So on Facebook, I posted this video of my cow. She is 
in the last stages of pregnancy, okay? And she was laying on the ground and her, not her tutu hole, but her butthole was like this big, okay? And I go out there and I'm filming and all of a sudden I see that her butt is this big. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to call the vet because I didn't know if she was about to go into labor or what. I mean, that was really true. I didn't know. And so I did this one minute video and I was talking about Dee Dee about to give birth. And I came across that and I said something. Well, basically, um, the video has gone viral. Okay. And it's gone viral because people have put me in their mouth, chewed it up, spit it out and stomped on it talking about me. It has been awful. I mean, these people are telling me that um, I'm not a farmer. Um, if I don't know how to do a C-section without the vet, then I'm not a true farmer. I can't remember. All these crazy things people are saying to me. And my followers were wanting to take up for me. They were like, you don't talk about my Aunt Judy that way. I'm like, yo. So I went live and said, listen to me. That's not what you need to do, okay? We don't need to do that. We need to keep them talking because the more they rat me out, the more comments are on this video, and the more money I'm going to make off this video, and I've got the vet coming, and the vet bill is going to be about $500. So my backup dancers, instead of attacking these people, they were so kind to these people. And when they were saying that I was not a farmer, they were like, oh my, God. like the lady said I wasn't a farmer because I didn't know how to do a C-section. Well, my backup dancers were like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. You Wait a minute, you know how to do your own C-section? And then the other person that was saying that responds back and they're like, oh yeah, we do C-sections all the time and my followers are getting them to respond. Y'all, I'm just going to tell you, because of my backup dancers being kind, not chewing them out saying, don't you, don't you talk to my Aunt Judy that way. They showed kindness. And those people kept talking. Okay? They kept talking. I have not checked lately. I'm going to tell you, we were up to like $1,400 that I have made off that video from my followers showing kindness, okay? So they paid for my vet bill, but let me just go out here and see what we're at. It's really crazy, but that's the sh that shows you how important followers and subscribers are to help and support our farm. But see, a lot of times when someone talks ugly about a creator, you want to go on the attack. So do I. It's normal. Like we all want to go attack. But see, we should be kind and just show them kindness because maybe they'll come around, you know. And but I told p people, I'm like, don't attack me. Go, go, Judy, go, Judy, go, go, Judy, go, Judy, go. <laughs> So everybody was commenting, go Judy, go Judy, go. And people were being mean to me because my numbers, <laughs> my numbers were going up. And I was like, look, I just need $500 to pay the vet bill. And they showed out. So I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give back in some way. I, I haven't figured out how I'm going to give back with this money, but I'm going to give back with this money. Definitely. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. All right. It's so funny that you can make, it's really kind of stupid that you would make this much money off a video. And please keep in mind that I don't ever do that. That this is something rare. I don't ever make that much money. But I was trying to, I was trying to show followers how it works and show them that how, in, like, I can't run Sneed's Farmhouse by myself, like with social media. There's no way. Like, you are the most important. 
I mean, I, I realize I bring the content, I bring the farm, I bring the entertainment, I bring talking to you guys about changing your lives and stuff like that. But it's you that make the difference. Like when you see um, these group homes come to my farm and these kids come to my farm, you're helping that happen. It's not just Aunt Judy doing it all. No, you are the backbone of why it keeps happening. So understand that. I can't get my phone to work, but it's some crazy amount of money that I've made off that video from people being so ugly to me. Very, very rude and ugly. As a matter of fact, just to let you know, um, I, I have a children's book. So a lot of you are new to me. I have a children's book and I'm coming out with a new children's book and it's about uh, people saying that I'm not a farmer because I was a city girl. I've never wanted to farm. And so this is all kind of new to me in the past five years. I've started this farm and I'm learning as I go. And so the book is about me, not people saying I'm not a farmer and see, just to let you know is um, my farm wasn't started by me per se. Um, I didn't say, oh, I want to quit my job and have a farm and stay home or make a supplemental income or wh whatever. I didn't say any of that. I um, started getting animals and people started asking if they could come to my farm. And so I was saying yes. And it got where I was busy and I had to go get insurance. And I was letting people go to my bathroom in my house. and. Basically, I had to go get a porta potty and I had to get insurance, which means I had to charge people to get into my farm to pay the bills. And then I became a nonprofit and then it just kept going. And it's it's not something that I started. I truly feel like that in, in my book, it says this, that like, let's see. Let me go find it if I can find it. It's my book. It's a, it's like people say Judy's not a farmer because she doesn't drive a truck. She drives a Jeep. But Judy didn't listen. Instead, she prayed. So she went and played with her sheep. And it, it rhymes like that about me not being a farmer. And at the end, it says basically that when other people say I'm not a farmer, that the main line is, is I put on the armor of God is the reason why my farm is the way it is today. And so, so many times in life, people try to tell you you're a certain way, you're all these things that people say to you to put you down. But if you will just keep knowing, like keep praying and knowing where you're going with this and stay strong, um, it's got me to where I am today and because so many times people have been telling me that I'm not a farmer and I just had to keep focus and go, you know what, push those people, get them. And I, I say this often, get those people out of your life. The people that pull you down and pull you in the wrong direction, elbow them out of your life and surround yourself with people that lift you up and point you in the right direction. And that's how you get to where you need to be. If you want to, if you want to be a farmer, surround yourself with farmers that are, that are, have a business and that will point you in the right direction, not sit here and tell you that you're not a farmer because you don't know how to do a C-section. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, those are things that you have to do. I do sell my book. Um, you can go, it's, it's on Amazon. So you can go to Sneed's Farmhouse on Amazon. It's $20 and you can buy it off of Amazon. Um <clears throat> Or you can buy it directly from me. Either one. Um, oh, I've never heard that, Susan. Um, I know Georgia. Georgia knew me before I became a farmer. And she knows that this is not like me. I never wanted a chicken, you know? <laughs> so Georgia, the people that know me, even my family that see me today, 
they know that this is not something I ever desired. And I think that's where um, petting zoos and they go wrong is because they start it for the wrong reasons. They start it because they're looking to supplement their income and stuff like that. And, and it's a dead end. Like you're not going to make money having a petting zoo. It, you have to have passion and love for an animal and for people to keep doing what you're doing. And that's why I've been able to do it for five years is because um, this is my hobby. This is not a job for me. This is something that I enjoy giving back to my community. I'm not looking to get rich. I'm not looking like that's not even Shane and I are already fine. Like we're fine. We're not rich, but we're fine. Like we are comfortable and we are fine. And <clears throat> I don't, it's a hobby. So all the money that I make goes back into the farm to grow it, to reach more people. And um, I think that's why I've been able to stay in business for the past five years is simply because my mission has been to give back. And I'm greatly blessed by giving back because, it, you know, when you give back, it, it, it brings something to your heart. You know, when you give to the needy or whatever, it just it makes your heart feel good. You know, it's like it's like a blessing that you can't explain. Um, and uh, from the from the beginning, Shane said, Judy, this is not a job. Judy, this is not a job because in the beginning I was trying to make it into a job. And I realized that this was a dead end. <laughs> like, like you can't do that. And I thought that that's what I was supposed to be doing because Shane wanted me to stay home and I'm not a stay home person. Yes, Deb, that is correct. I'll show you. Um, and once I started having fun with it and realized that there's so much more to life than a dollar, I learned to sit back and enjoy. And I learned to trust. Here it is. Sneed's Farmhouse. Right here. Oh. Can't point to it right there on Amazon. It's twenty dollars. But um, anyway, I I just thank you. I'm gonna read some of your comments. <laughs> yeah, I think. The difference in um, me being a farmer is, I will tell you this. So in the beginning, I was killing myself doing tours four times a day. I was doing them at 10, 12, 2, and 4. I was killing myself to not be upside down in my farm. And I was doing field trips. I was, I was just, I was running myself ragged. And social media started and I already had a pretty big following somewhat on Facebook, but I didn't on YouTube. And Jason and Brooke, I met them, the Cockhill Farm, uh, the Smiths. And um, I met them and the day they came and filmed my farm, my life totally changed with YouTube because I didn't even do YouTube before that. And so it really grew and it's been growing my, my page is growing really fast. It's hard for me to even keep up. And it is very emotional and overwhelming because I just feel like I'm just this little old girl in Coleman and I'm just sharing my testimony and I'm sharing my farm with people all over the world. And it makes me emotional because so much has happened and it's not... It, it's the relationships that I have met some of my best friends through YouTube and Facebook. And it's friends that I, I'm so close to these people. And it's, it's just like, it gets emotional because like, I'm so thankful for social media because you guys are the one that keep me going. 
you keep me moving forward. Like Judy, you got this. You know, there was a time where I was scared to drive the tractor and I could hear the backup dance going, Judy, you can put out the hay. You can do this. And I was scared to death. And I just said, okay, I can hear all these people cheering for me. I can go put this hay out. And I did it. And to this now I go put the hay out and I'm not even stressed out really. And so it's really, um, it's you that's kept, kept me going. And days that I feel really tired, I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. Y'all just keep me going. You, you encourage me. And I just, um, I thank you so much. Jason and Brooke are a precious people. They are so precious. They have helped me in so many ways. And I could never repay them for all the blessings. They, they got me started. And they got me started and I just took off. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to figure it out as I go. And if, if you go back and look at my first videos and my first thumbnails, thumbnail for <laughs> train wreck. Oh, but I just, I've just learned. And I, know, we got things to do around here. Let's talk on the dang computer all day. Did somebody say something? I felt like I heard something ringing in my ear. It sounded like a bear growling or something. <laughs> Thank you. These earrings were given to me um, by follower. Um, yep. Susan, you're right. Oh, Crystal, I just see you're here. Crystal did the tour this morning. Her son came here on a field trip with the school and he brought his mom and dad back to see my farm. And we had so much fun today. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Oh my gosh, Liz. Oh my gosh. Her mom, Jan, the girl that it was her birthday, she would, let me just show you. Let me just show you. Let's see if I can find it. She sang to Larry. <laughs> My dad is very shy, okay? <laughs> and she started singing to... Okay, here it is. Hang on. Let me... I'm going to... I wish that I could put it on the screen, but for some reason, my okay, hang on. Let me turn the volume up so y'all can hear this. Keep in mind, my dad is shy, Okay. Oh, wait. Huh? Listen. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Yeah! <laughs> she sang, you are my sunshine to my dad. <laughs> it was the cutest thing in my I could see my dad just like smiling ear to ear that someone knew him. Of course, you know, he doesn't understand how she knows him, but she, you know, she knows him through social media. And so she came and sang to my dad, um, you know, if you don't know, my dad's on hospice and he's had cancer and um, she came and sang to him and y'all, it was so beautiful. And my dad just smiled. And then she left and he goes, what's her name? <laughs> And she was a ray of sunshine. I mean, she was 72 years old and she was just so bubbly. And so her, her daughter's on here right now. She, listen, she is the perfect example of what I would want to be when I turn her age. Full of life, tons of energy, a ray of sunshine, making everyone smile and laugh around her. That's exactly what I hope to do one day. She is precious. I don't, I guess she's not on here right now, but um, it was really cute. And every time somebody would say something, she'd put it to a song and she just bust out singing. <laughs> it was the cutest thing in the whole wide world. But when she was singing to my dad, my dad was like blushing. It was so funny. <laughs> It was so sweet, but um, my video um, that I'm putting out of her coming to my farm, her and her family, 
and the other family at my farm will come out Tuesday. Now, I need to tell y'all something. I am not going live in the morning at seven o'clock. I know. The only way I can go live, if, it, if I go live driving down the road in my Jeep with the rabbit, because sugar bug is getting fixed tomorrow. And I have to be at the vet at eight o'clock in the morning. And it takes me an hour to get there. So there's no way I can, unless we go at six o'clock in the morning. And I know none of y'all getting up at six. So I'm going to have to go live either in my Jeep. It's kind of loud in a Jeep. It's not like a car. It's kind of loud. I guess I could drive my dad's car. Um, but I will not be live in the morning. But I promise y'all that I'll go live um, when I get back with Sugar Bug. But Sugar Bug is six months old. She's my Angora rabbit. And she's the last one to get fixed. We couldn't fix her earlier because she wasn't old enough. They have to be six months old to fix them. But I have slowly... Um, in the part of becoming a farmer over the past five years and learning, I have learned that I don't find, I enjoy babies. I enjoy raising babies, but I don't enjoy finding babies' homes. It causes me anxiety and stress because people buy animals without thinking it through. They see this really cute bunny and they're like, oh my gosh. Or, you know, a kid comes to my farm and sees my bunny. Mom, please buy me a bunny. And then the mom calls me and goes, okay, I want to get her a bunny for her birthday. And I go over, okay, do you understand what a bunny lasts about 12 years? Do you understand the care? And then the bunnies end up coming back to me. And same thing with the piglets. Like when she, she has these piglets, like I love raising babies. I can raise babies like and teach them all kinds of things because I spend so much time with them. Um, but when it's time for them to go to another home, I go into La La Land. I am like sobbing like a baby. I'm scared they're not going to be taken care of. I'm scared. Like I, I don't do well with it. So over the past I don't know, six months, I have slowly been fixing all my males. So the only males that are intact now is Dexter, which Shane really doesn't want to fix Dexter. I'm begging him to let me fix Dexter. I know the thought of not having a baby calf anymore is sad, but Dexter needs to be fixed. And the other one is Hey Mickey. Hey Mickey's too young to get fixed. Hey Mickey is my alpaca. But he's too small to get fixed. He can't get fixed till he's about 18 months old. So everybody else is fixed on my farm now. Boyfriend the pig, Leroy the donkey, all the goat. Well, the goat's gone. Sorry. Um, my male goat's gone to another home. So I don't have a male. Ruger's fixed. He's a goat. He's fixed. Uh, Freddie, my other pig, is fixed. Um, all the alpacas are fixed besides Hey Mickey and the sheep are fixed. So um, it's just, I've just realized that I don't need to be population populating this world with more animals. I think there's animals that need to be rescued and, and I just, I don't feel right about it. Um, I, I just don't feel right about it. I feel like that um, just in my experience with the animals coming back to me, I just feel like that's what I, that that's what my farm needs. And it's the thought of not, you know, the thought of not having babies on the farm makes me sad. I'm not going to lie because I love it. Um, but it just, there's not enough good homes out there or either I haven't found them. I don't know. <laughs> I just, it's just, it's just not what I need on my farm. And that's another thing people were yelling at me. And I see Lester goes through the same thing is people go, I thought you were sanctuary. Why are you having babies? And I'm like, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> they love to say that. And I guess in my head with the females, 
they love being moms. Just like, you know, like us as human beings, when the thought of us not having kids, you see the depression and the sadness that a person, a human being goes through when they can't conceive. Um, like right now, Sugarbug is keeps building a nest for babies and she's not pregnant because she's never been around a male. So I know she's not pregnant, but she's pulling out her wool as though she's about to have babies because she's desiring that so bad. And um, it's kind of sad. But once you fix the animals, that desire goes away. That desire goes away. And um, like with rabbits, for example, rabbits run a high risk of having cancer, like uterine cancer, bladder cancer. Um, <clears throat> and when you fix them, it cuts, it cuts it away a hundred percent. Like they don't get cancer when you have, when you fix them. So the longevity fluffy may I've had for four years. Okay. And the thought of me losing her is like, I can't even fathom the thought of it. And I'm like, I've got to get her fixed because I need to make sure she has the best quality of life as she can. So I just decided to not breed anymore. Now we will continue. Dexter and Dee Dee will continue to breed. She can have, I think, seven before she has to be retired. Um, this is number two. But my heart wants to fix Dexter. But me and Shane are not on the same page. We're not on the same page. Those cows are his babies. And um, he doesn't, he doesn't think like me. <laughs> he doesn't. So we will see. I may just slip the knife on him one day and not tell Shane, let him come back and go, I have no idea what happened to him. He just got cut off. We still on that phone? No, he wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to him. I'm just kidding. I have to make sure that me and Shane are on the same page and he's just not ready to make that commitment. And I understand like for a long time, I wasn't, I didn't want to make the commitment with boyfriend, the pig because he's six. I thought you were eating again. If I was, what did you mean to make? Nothing. You cute. You cute and fluffy. You are. Um, when I decided to have boyfriend fixed, um, he's six years old and he's uh, grown. So um, it was putting his life at risk for me to fix him. And I was teeter-totting back and forth going, okay, well, these are my choices. My choices are to get boyfriend fixed or to keep she-she away from boyfriend and be separated by fences or um, I have to get rid of Shishi or get rid of boyfriend. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not getting rid, rid of either one of them. They're with me for a lifetime. So that is not happening. And I was trying to put Shishi in a fence away from boyfriend. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. My animals free range every single day, all of them. And locking Shishi up in that fence without her friends was the saddest thing that I have ever seen. She would literally sit there and cry because she had nobody to play with. And I was like, well, I don't want to buy another pig. I already have three. And I thought, well, maybe I'll rescue one. Maybe somebody will have somebody, one that I need. And it wasn't coming. And I was like, this is not working. So I said, I am went and set the vet down. I was like, look, is he what are the chances of him dying? Is it like huge? And he's like, I'll tell you what, Judy, if you bring him in in February, when it's the coldest month, I'll fix him. And it will, it will reduce his risk of dying because he won't be in the heat. He'll be in the cold. And I was like, okay. So, um, I went and had him fixed and it was rough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There's a video out there on YouTube if you want to see it of when I fixed boyfriend. It was rough, but I um I uh had him fixed and see now after she she has these babies, we will have no more picklets. So it makes me sad, but it makes me happy. So I wish that I was a rescue. 
I don't even know if this type of rescue even is heard of. I don't know. I'm probably making this rescue up in my brain, but this is what I would love to do. I would lo love to rescue babies that mothers reject them, like piglets or alpacas or whatever, like goats that mom rejects them. Because I have rescued, like Ruger was a rejection. I, I rescued Ruger. His mom would not let him nurse. I would love to rescue babies and raise them, but I want to give them back to the farm they come from and let them find a home because I don't do well with that. But I wish that I could rescue these babies. My type of rescue is I enjoy rescuing and keeping them forever. That's what I enjoy. Um, and I enjoy raising babies. Um, but lately, I, I don't have 50 acres. If I did, I would rescue more. But I have to be mindful that I don't have that big of an area. My Where my animals are now, they do not have, they don't graze on pasture land. They graze on hay 24 hours and grain. And so the ideal situation is for them to live in a pasture. Well, that's why in my head, I dream of having 50 acres because I would love to see my animals in a pasture. I would. Um, but we're doing what we're doing right now. We're, we're, we're They're fine. They're healthy. My animals have been healthy for, a, I've had them forever, <laughs> five years almost. They're healthy as ever. They're fine not grazing on grass. The good thing about me not having grass is I don't have to worry about parasites. My animals don't get sick because they eat fresh hay and grain all day. <laughs> They're not grazing on grass where there's pee and poop and all that stuff. They eat from a hayloft in with hay in it and it's all fresh. So I don't have parasite problems ever. I do worm them, deworm them. Um, but um I don't have issues. Like a lot of people with alpacas have to worry about inworm. I don't. Um, it's not a problem in my farm because I don't have grass for them to graze on. So there are some benefits. Um, it just bothers me that my animals, I want them on a big, beautiful green pasture. <laughs> but if God chooses to bless me with that one day, wouldn't that be great? But if he doesn't, I'm fine where I'm at. My property is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Like it is beautiful. Uh, it's not flat land. So we have probably three acres that is fenced in for the animals. And then the rest of it's down at our creek area. And um, uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. A lot of people that see our Walker Johnson, I have not seen you in 400 years. Just saying, where have you been? <laughs> You've not been on my live forever. Um, I was about to call the police and see if you were do a, a wellness check on you. Um, what's Diane talking about? Hey, my place, my farm. <laughs> My page, my channel is a safe place to come. I will tell you that. You've been busy lately. I noticed you hadn't been around. I thought, well, maybe he's a he's a, a scammer. <laughs> I just thought he was a real person. <laughs> hey, ain't nobody doing spell checks here. Because listen, I don't have the best English either. So. I'm reading y'all's, um, yes, Teresa, I want to be a foster. Yes. Yeah. That's what I would love to be the middleman and raise them. Like, let me do all the hard work of bottle feeding and raising them and getting up in the middle of the night. Let me do all the hard work for you. But then like, I can't handle rehoming. When I was in the beginning, I was doing chickens and I was selling baby chicks and people would pull in the driveway and get them. And I literally would feel like, 
I can't do this. They're taking my baby chicks. Are they going to be good? Are they going to have a good home? What if they don't take care of them? I would do that. I would go into a total anxiety attack because I would be so worried about these babies and if they were going to good homes. Because, no, not everyone is like me. You know, they don't sit at their farm 24-7 and take care of animals all day long like me. So I would sit there and worry about whether they were going to be protected or not. So like, it just was not good for me. It's not good for me to have babies, but I would love to be a foster. I would love it. I would love it. But in order to be a foster, I have to have more land. I can't do it here. Tracy, you are correct. I have been... This is my son calling me. Um, I have enough animals. I'm. I don't. I don't look to get. I don't want to have a gazillion animals. That's not my goal. That's not what I'm out to do. All right, guys. What time is it? It is almost time. For me to go put the animals to bed and tell she, she, Freddie, and boyfriend to go brush their teeth and tell the alpacas to go say their prayers. So everyone goes night night and get in the barn and we can start all over tomorrow. <laughs> so they usually, it's usually dark by 7 15. So I usually go out there around six. So I need to go walk the dogs. I need to get them taken care of first and then go out to the animals. Okay. If you are a normal follower of mine, I will not be live in the morning at 7 o'clock. I know. It's awful, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to miss y'all more than you're going to miss me. I'm just telling you, okay? But I have to go take Sugar Bug to have surgery in the morning to be fixed. So I will not be live. I'm going to try to go live when I get back to let you know how Sugar Bug did. So thank you for joining me. If you're a new follower, a new subscriber, Thank you. Welcome to my page. I hope that I bring you nothing but smiles and joy as you watch these people with my animals. Um, I thank you for supporting my farm um, and all the encouragement. All you people that came from Leicester are so sweet. Y'all have uh, y'all are so sweet. You've been saying the nicest things to me, encouraging me to dance, and I thank you. I will see you this week. Love y'all. Night night. Go brush your teeth. Go say your prayers. <laughs>